conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast about feet, part two. I'm Dan O'Keefe, and with a disgusted face, it's Anna Otto, as always. How are you, Anna? I'm going to be honest. Maybe this is narcissistic of me, but the only person whose feet I've ever enjoyed looking at are my own. So, Well, that's one more than me. I have pretty feet, I think. I think I roasted Gage's feet last weekend, so (laughs) I have to be nice. His are fine, I guess. I'm sure you have have... gorgeous feet, Dan. That pained me to say. It, yeah, we it gotta me to hear. <laughs> I have. We're not re-recording this intro. We're no. keeping it as is. We're gonna end up on a porn site. I hate We're it. We're starting off on foot talk. Starting People off on the right this... foot. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. People are gonna take this audio and make it on the the foot side of TikTok. Ugh, I don't want to be there. Because of our there. large TikTok presence that this podcast has. I have five followers on TikTok. I think I have like forty something. Because I tried, well, I tried for like three weeks to post stuff and grow, Mm -hmm. and then I got tired and haven't posted since October. (sighs) I did leave a comment for the first time today. Mm -hmm. There's a guy on TikTok who posts, he calls himself like a TikTok news reporter. Um, His name is Marcus DiPaola or DiPola or something. Mm. And he he posted a video that was like, the purpose of news is to point out the bad things and or the pu- purpose of journalism is to point out the bad things and make it so people change them. And I just fundamentally disagree with him. Interesting. That's not that's not the purpose of that's activism, which if you want to be an activist, more power to you. But that's not journalism. He also just basically yells clickbait headlines and doesn't give any context or explanation of stuff. I hate that. That's a no for me, dog. Right? He also calls himself News Daddy. Uh, Oh, no. That was a reaction. (laughs) That was a natural reaction. Anytime somebody, besides an actual father, refers to themselves as daddy, it makes me want to cry. Um... Yeah, sometimes Gage will refer to himself, like, jokingly as daddy. Like, he, like, I don't know how to explain like it. Without... daddy's got a new pair of shoes or something? Yeah, except it'll be like, he calls himself, like, well, sometimes he calls himself the Garlic King, but sometimes he'll be like, it's me, the Garlic Daddy. And I'm like, I want to die. I want to <laughs> die. We're never using garlic in this house again. That's false. We love garlic, but this is a flavor free home. This is a white only like. Oh, that sounded bad. White flavors only. White white flavors only. No, (laughs) Dan, edit that out. Everyone is welcome here. But like not right now because we're in a pandemic, but everyone is welcome here. Oh, man, I'm going to get canceled. This house is a sundown town. No. (gasps) Oh, God, I'm so red. I'm so embarrassed. I should not be allowed to talk. Wait, you're saying you're red? Yeah, can you tell? How are you going to be allowed in your home? Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway, this has been the now weekly segment of TikTok, where we start off talking about TikTok, because that's all that we look at every day. Um, I love TikTok. Anyway. So the movie that we're talking about today is obviously Kill Bill Volume 2. Directed by Quentin Tarantino, produced by Lawrence Bender, written by Quentin Tarantino, starring Uma Thurman, David Carradine, Michael Madsen, Daryl Hannah, Gordon Liu, and Michael Parks. Can I say something? Yes, you can. I'm raising my hand. Do you see? I wasn't looking at the screen, but yes, I do. I have two things to say, actually. One, I think it's funny that they credit Samuel L. Jackson, but they never showed his face. Yeah, they did. Oh, did they? Yeah, you... <laughs> I feel like I mostly saw the back of his head. Most of it was the back of his head, but there are like two shots where he 
I also feel like shot. I also feel like he wandered onto set and they were like, you got time? And he said, sure. Can I smoke a cigarette on screen? And they said, sure, right. Sam. And he did it. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to say, sort of having to do with the movie, but not really. Remember how last week we talked about whether or not Quentin Tarantino was a feminist and if this was a feminist film? Yes. Well, I'm still on the fence about all of that. However, I'm really excited to learn. Now, this is a horrible thing that happened, as we all know, with the Harvey Weinstein um, allegations and assaults and things like that. All those terrible Mm -hmm. things that came out. Um, However, I did really enjoy hearing Gage told me that when Uma Thurman came forward with her allegations and her experience um, and her horrible things that happened... Quentin stood by her and really supported her. And I know, like, that's just bare minimum being a good friend. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't, like, really praise him for this. But it made me happy to hear that. You know? Like, I know that's silly of me to say. But to say I expected less (laughs) would be an understatement. (laughs) (laughs) So. For all the... um vibes that i feel like quentin tarantino gives off of the guy at blockbuster that nobody really wants to talk to oh god he neck like he's breathing down your neck while you're trying to look at a movie yeah he's talking to you about rashomon for 45 minutes no. when you just want to check out super babies baby geniuses too um what um i i feel like he's still he cares a lot about people i think yeah. he's at heart, he has good intentions all the time. Yeah, which, I mean, that's Most something time. good to recognize. I mean, like, obviously, including strong women and people of different, like, ethnic backgrounds and, like, ages and all different walks of life should be the thing that you do when you make movies. Mm-hmm. But he does it, at least for these movies. I know it's, like, a little different because he's, like, paying homage to... Um, samurai films and like kung fu films and sorry now my computer's still making noises anyway um, he's paying homage to those kinds of films and like I guess we could get into the whole debate of whether or not he should have cast like a person of color in the lead since the character like is paying homage to those kinds of roles but that's like a whole different podcast and that could be a whole debate but sticking to the idea that this was made in 2002 Which isn't that long ago, but it's still impressive, and it's good, the amount of people of all different backgrounds that he used. I mean, granted, was there room for um, inviting more people of color and different backgrounds to be in this film? Yes, but I think for the time, he took a really good step towards, you know, casting lots of strong women and lots of, you know... I hope I'm making sense. I feel like I'm talking in circles trying to say what I'm trying to say, but... Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I will applaud this movie for the fact that I think it's a bit progressive. Not a ton, but like just like like half of a step. It's it's not Flo from Progressive. It's Jamie from Progressive. No, not Jamie. <laughs> not Jamie with his stubble. I can't. Uh, so back to the the... Bottom line info, the music is by RZA of the Wu-Tang Clan. I don't know if it's RZA or RZA. I'm sorry that I I, just showed my, um, to quote Anna, my whiteness You know, in this whites-only house. Stop, Dan. I really want to erase that. I'm so embarrassed. I always put my foot in my mouth by saying the wrong thing. Oh, my God. Uh, The music is also by the director of Spy Spy Kids, Robert Rodriguez. Yes. Wait. Speaking of which, do you watch Masked Singer? I do not. Was he in the Masked Singer? No, but Danny Trejo was unmasked last week. What? Spoilers, everyone. In case you didn't know, it was kind of obvious. But yeah, Gage guessed it, and I was dying over it. Anyway. I have only ever seen the episode of the Masked Singer that they had on after the Super Bowl two years ago, where I guessed that whatever the monster that Drew Carey ended up being... I thought it was Danny Bonaducci from the Partridge family. Oh and my God, you're wrong. ancient. You're ancient. I am. I'm we, elderly. We knew it was Danny Trejo because, you know, he has like a very specific accent. Yes. And like, um, you can't tell from like the way they speak because their voices changed up, but you can still hear his accent because some people disguise their voices, but some people 
just are there for fun. Also, um, yeah. Danny Trejo cannot sing, so he was just vibing the whole time. And, <laughs> you know, things were great. Things were wonderful until he uttered the phrase, Jenny McCarthy, I really love the work you do. And then I went, Danny, no. No. Danny, no. <laughs> Please. Please, Jenny McCarthy's Danny. on my my blech list. Yeah, or if I too. saw them in public, I would go blech. I don't think I'd cross the street to meet her. No. You know? I really don't. <laughs> um, the Kill Bill Volume 2 was released on April 16th, 2004. With a budget of thirty million, it made one hundred and fifty-two point two million dollars, and Roger Ebert again gave it four stars out of four, saying, "Put the two parts together, and Tarantino has made a masterful saga that celebrates the martial arts genre while kidding it, loving it, and transcending it. This is all one film, and now that we see it whole, it's greater than its two parts." And in two thousand nine, he named Kill Bill one of the twenty best films of the decade. I. You know, I'll put it this way. This is not my go-to genre. Mm -hmm. Action-y, kung fu, martial arts, whatever it goes under. I feel like it goes under all three of those things. I'm not usually drawn to those styles of movies. I don't love action. But, yeah, I think this is a beautiful story. I think it's really well put together. I think it Mm -hmm. flows. I think... There's no loose ends at the end. I think, in a way, it's a really interesting and beautiful love story, in a way. That's fair. A non-traditional love story. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... it's. We'll get to it, but I had some interesting thoughts while I was watching this. Uh Uh-huh. Just about, like, their story together. Like, number one, Bill isn't cute. Why are all these women throwing themselves at him? Are you kidding me? No. You don't want strip mall Hugh Hefner? I don't want regular Hugh Hefner, so... Well, they're both dead. Oh, rip, 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 rip. Okay, I'm sorry. This is... Death is never funny, but David Carradine died um, in an auto asphyxiation accident in Thailand. A, an erotic auto asphyxiation accident. Oh my God. Entirely. That's terrifying to me. Like, right. I it just felt like information that needed to be put out there for full context. I mean, that's terrifying that it's not for me, dog. It's not for me. You know, I like my airways clean and open i don't know if i ever told you this but i am scared of people touching my neck or like being too close to my neck Mm -hmm. like granted i can't get my hair cut and stuff but like (laughs) i'm just picturing you screaming when the (laughs) somebody comes to cut your hair yeah but like when we'd be in the costume shop and stuff if they ever had to measure around my neck or like if i had a a dress where the neck was really tight or something it kind of made me nervous Uh uh-huh just don't like that feeling of not being able to breathe even if I completely can. Weird not though because I like sort wearing of woman. No, not a necktie woman, but I do like a good choker. Yeah. But do you it's with those they're like the elastic ones, right? Where they're not really all that well, choky. That's um there's some like that, but there's also like I have one that is choky like that except not really because apparently i have a thin neck question mark um because it doesn't go that tight on me so i don't know um anyway speaking of thin necks david carradine i don't know let's just start talking about the movie i'm sorry everyone yeah i have no way to tie that back into the movie you've had to listen to me Um, embarrass myself accidentally multiple times tonight so I have. It's been wonderful. There's a lot that we recorded before we started the episode that I can't put in, um, but I wish that I could. No, Dan. I wish. I my mouth moves faster than my brain. I think you you almost (laughs) you almost (laughs) even saying that you almost mixed it up. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, my mouth moves. My brain moves. They just don't connect. Mm -hmm. It's just happening and popping and locking and dropping over here is that even legal not another peep i think listen to our high school musical episodes 
available now on whatever streaming service you use, so long as that streaming service is Spotify or Apple Podcasts, because I can't be bothered to set up the rest of them. No. Inside Baseball. Anyway, Kill Bill Volume 2 starts out with a rehash of Kill Bill Volume 1, delivered straight to the camera by Uma Thurman. I wish every movie started like this. Every sequel to any movie should start with the main character telling you what happened in the last movie so I can remember. It was great. It was a good refresher. Thank you, Killiam Billiam. That's his full name. Yes. Um, And then we see a flashback to the day of the wedding. Um, Isn't it the same exact? Oh, wait, no, no, no. You're talking about the next thing. Sorry, never mind. Yes. What did I skip? No, I was thinking of the very beginning where it's literally shot for shot, the first scene they use in the other movie, too. But then I was was getting confused, so never mind. It is a shot of the wedding. And that Tommy gentleman seems very nice. He does. I feel bad for him. Big family. Everybody's coming to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the wedding, it's basically that Uma Thurman, whose name we don't know yet, again bleeped out as the bride. She gives that her name is Agatha. Love that. Um, I wanted to just reference WandaVision, but I didn't want to ruin it in case somebody hasn't finished it yet. Well, who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. There we go. I ruined it for Yes, him. I have my Agatha socks that Gage got me. <laughs> um, so at the wedding, as they're at this wedding rehearsal, talking things over, um, Bill shows up, and now we see the face of David Carradine, and man... What a it's sexy man. He's average at best, Dan. I've seen 25 million better looking men today. There, I'll say it. You've seen 25 million men today? It feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that exhausted by them. Uh, so he and the bride get to chatting and rehashing some things a lot of this how you know how a lot of the last movie was a lot of action Mm -hmm. a lot of this movie it's like they took all the action put it in one movie and took the dialogue and put in the other movie yes i was able to follow along better this time yeah (laughs) um also they did a close-up on their feet during the scene that i yes they did did. not like they did like a doesn't have pretty feet how dare you Quentin Tarantino just turned off the podcast. I'm sorry, Quentin. I'm sorry, Quentin, for... Hannah, I'll show you my ugly feet if you want. I will never show Um, anyone my feet, except for (laughs) under the sanctity of marriage. So they invite... She tells her soon-to-be husband that David Carradine is her dad... I hated this part. I literally hated this part. And then the soon-to-be husband invites David Carradine to give her away. He says he can't do it. All right. And then the goons show up and shoot down the place. Um, I just want to take two seconds to acknowledge how much I hated that she told Tommy that was her dad, but they were just kissing on the lips like it ain't no Mm -hmm. thing. Hated it. I hated it. Because if you're Tommy and she goes, oh, this is my dad. And you see somebody kissing their quote unquote dad like that. I would be like, something is fishy. What in the Alabama down south backwoods is this? The only other person I know who kisses on the lips is Tom Brady and his son. Can't be trusted. Can't be trusted. No, absolutely not. Put your lips away from mine if you are my parents. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? Mm-hmm. My dad gives me a good kiss on the cheek before bed if I'm lucky. Usually it's just a hug. Because mm-hmm. he's sitting in a chair and he's watching Ghost Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 25. Why am I at their house anyway? I should be at my house, but I'm just here taking the groceries and using up their electricity. <laughs> Is there anything more you need to get off your chest? No, I'm just teasing. I love my parents. I'm going there for Easter. Are you getting groceries from them? Absolutely. I'm going to take their groceries. Mm -hmm. 
my parents they just remodeled a lot of the inside of their house and they moved where the pantry is Mm -hmm. it used to be right in the kitchen right when you walked in now it's in Mm -hmm. the back hallway so you have to take one step oh no boy i am all thrown off because i'll walk in there and i'll go right to where the the pantry was and i'll be like there are pots in here why are you do with all these pots where are the cheez-its literally mood am i supposed to bake my mom gets so annoyed because every time i come over i open a new snack (laughs) because my dad you know he buys them and they're gonna go uneaten if i don't help so help Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever whatever lets you sleep at night that's Uh, what i do so four (laughs) years later we are introduced to michael madsen um Playing the character of Bud, who was a member of the Deadly Viper Assassin Squad. He has a talk with Bill. Bill tries to get him to come back because, you know, the bride is here and she's coming to kill him. And Michael mm-hmm. Madsen's like, well, maybe we deserve to die. I mean, anyway, I'm going to go show fits. up late to the strip club and. Get fired from the strip club. Okay, Gage and I were roasting his outfit to filth. We were like, what is that bowling shirt with that hat? (laughs) His necklace with the razor blade on it? I screamed. Mm -hmm. I was like, that is an accident waiting to happen. You bend down or like it jingles while you're walking around and somebody bumps you sliced. Sliced Mm -hmm. right in the sternum. Perfect. You hear that? You hear me bang on my sternum? sternum? My sternum. Oh my god. <laughs> isn't your talk. sternum in your? Isn't that like a bone in your ear? That's a stirrup because it looks stirrup. like a stirrup on a on like a, a saddle. Yeah. Um. I liked Michael Madsen's outfit. I like bowling shirts and I like cowboy hats. You see me rolling my eyes. You're rolling your entire head. Yes, to show you just You're how... You're whipping it around. I can't even imagine you wearing a bowling shirt, but I also can imagine you wearing a bowling shirt. Do you want me to go grab shirt? it? I have please, one in my closet. No. Dan, no, please. <laughs> do you have the hat that goes with it? I do not have a cowboy hat. Hmm, that can be Which is really fixed. disappointing because they're the only hats that fit my head. We could get you a cowboy hat. We could make this work. We could I get was you a in custom Gatlinburg, one. Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, I could have gotten boots. I could have gotten hats. Boots with the fur. I could have gotten everything. (laughs) My brain went directly to boots with the fur. I know. Flo, my man. My dad loves Flo Rida. So in Kill Bill Volume (laughs) 2. Anyway. uh, The bride, she does show up to Michael Madsen's trailer. She's hiding underneath as he gets home after being fired. Her bangs are sticking out of her ski mask? I was flabbergasted. I was like, girl, put those away. Put those away. You look ridiculous. (laughs) Uh, So as she tries to attack Michael Madsen, he responds by shooting her point blank with a rock salt bullet, knocking her 40 feet back. What uh, is a rock salt bullet? Her. I have a question. It's, so it's rock salt in place of an actual bullet. So it does more surface level damage. It won't go and like pierce your organs or anything. Mm. It'll just, it's like getting sprayed with salt very fast. It's like a stun gun. Like road salt, kind of, but it, it messes up. It's like getting road rash, but from a gunshot. Owie. Okay, thank you. I didn't know. So, and I yeah. forgot to ask Gage, so I sounded intelligent on the podcast. But since I've already <laughs> like sounded like a drunk person 20 times this episode, I thought I'd just, you know, shoot my shot and ask. Perfect. Uh so after the bride gets knocked out, she gets sedated by Michael Madsen. Yeah, and, and I closed my eyes for that seceded. part, which I'm glad yeah. about. Because she sticks a needle. He sticks a needle in her butt. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, Michael Madsen then calls. Do you know who he calls? Because I just forgot Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah. You there forgot her name. At I, one point. I had her in my head. What was it? At one point, we were watching the movie, and she got splashed with water or something, and Gage goes, oh, no, she's going to turn into a mermaid. And I... <laughs> was so upset dan this is the third daryl hannah movie we've watched it is 
I had never seen a Daryl Hannah Four, movie before. Before this? What's the other one? To, I mean, like, because two kills. Before Kill this Bills, podcast. You know? Yeah. Wow. I'm looking Are we her right biggest? Now. Okay, I had. I'd seen Wall Street. Oh, I haven't seen that. Because I'd oh, seen wait. Splash and I'd seen A Walk to Remember where she doesn't look good. She's much cuter as a blonde. Yes. And then this, these two movies. Now, after watching Kill Bill, um, I believe you. She's hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, good talk. She's also an MTV Movie Award winner for Best Fight. In this movie? In this movie. Did Uma also win? Yes. Mm. I guess that was a silly question, but I had to make sure. <laughs> uh, so, he calls her and... He offers to sell the bride's sword uh, for one million dollars, and the you know Daryl Hannah accepts as mm-hmm. one does. It's the special sword, uh, and then he buries the bride alive with the help of a man who looked very short. That's the only thing I had about the guy who who helped bury uh, Uma Thurman. He just looked really small. I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> Looked like a regular guy, like a farmer dude. He just seemed really short. You know, like we just need somebody to help help with this burial scene. Hey, you there, man under five foot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and because Uma Thurman basically accepted the fact that she's going to get buried alive and stopped struggling, uh, Michael Madsen does give her an flashlight i couldn't remember the word for flashlight dan are you good i'm losing my words you're losing your words i'm slurring did we drink i didn't i'm having these not sponsored these sparkling polar with the essence of fresh lemons it's blueberry lemonade flavor wow i'm having big chewy nerds jelly beans who spiked your jelly beans somebody at the metro market probably clearly I'm the only one who's touched them. Um, no, I'm very tired. I wrote a paper today in the middle of the day. I'm using a different laptop because I'm having issues with the Apple Store. I was in Tennessee over the weekend, so Fun. I drove 11 hours yesterday. Man, I just want sleep. Okay, well, don't worry. We'll get through this together, Dan. We'll get through no, this we together. Won't. No, we won't. I just one of us will not survive the podcast. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> tune in to, next week to find out who it was. <laughs> um. So then we see a flashback to the bride learning from the legendary martial arts master Pai Mei. Not the beard <laughs> flipper. Yes, the beard. So you know I don't remember any characters' names ever. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what I referred to him as, the beard flipper. Not just the old dude? No, it was beard flipper because he was like, I feel like that actor was like, so uh, Q, what are we we thinking for this scene? Like, how much beard action do you want? Like, Mm -hmm. Like, are we thinking like this? Like, he's like flipping it. And Quentin just goes, yes. All of it, nonstop. Just never take your hands off your beard. And the actor said, say less. And he did it. And also, can I have eyebrows that are six feet long? Oh my God, they looked like they could take off in flight. I was like, is this supposed yeah. to. Why, why the eyebrows? Yeah. Why the beard flip? Gage said he's like, do you think I could grow my beard like that? I was like, absolutely not. We could get also, Gage- how did he get a straight beard? Straight. There's no curl. He had to use yield straightener. Yield. You know, like you warm some rocks over a fire and then you <laughs> and you like straighten your beard. That's how I imagine they used to do it. I mean, I guess they probably used an actual iron back when irons like were available. Mm-hmm. But I imagine that this gentleman in particular is um, immortal. That's what it seems like. So I'm guessing he was around before the invention of the iron. Probably. Um, so he has this technique called the five point palm exploding heart technique. Um, I guess they didn't come up with acronyms or shorter names at this time. Um, and Bill takes the bride to May's temple for training, um, where he 
immediately just demeans and berates and humiliates her and, and breaks trash. her down. He's so trash. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I know I said this was a love story, but that doesn't mean that he was a good person. <laughs> so no. sorry for blowing uh, in the mic. I just laughed at my own joke again. Oh, my God. Again. <laughs> Keep going. Now you're covering the mic with your hand. Yes. Do you still hear me? It looks like you're trying to keep a secret or something. Should I put an actual sock over it, like a wind sock? I don't have one, though. It's uh, fine. So We'll just suffer. Eventually, the bride gains the respect of Pai Mei. Um, and then we are back inside the coffin because she basically was learning a three-inch punch a lot of the time because he Pai Mei could break a board from three inches away and the bride well guess what she needs to break a board from three inches away so utilizing all her strength utilizing all her training she huffs and she puffs and she knocks 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 and eventually she climbs out of the grave breaking in breaking out and going back for her revenge oh my god I loved when she breaks out and she goes into the diner she's covered in <laughs> dust and can I have a glass of water like it just made me laugh <laughs> Like, ah. That was very funny. Cute. It's also, I I have a feeling that Quentin Tarantino is so just like proud of that one joke. He probably it laughed cuts to so black hard with time for laughter afterwards. There's like a two second pause before the the next chapter title shows up, so everybody can get their guffaws in. He was like, he probably sat in the premiere like when that happened, stood up and went laugh, laugh, <laughs> like. <laughs> cocaine still on his face like so anyway daryl hannah shows up in michael madsen's trailer uh to get the sword and then she kills him with a snake yo i saw that suitcase open and i went i don't trust that money i do not trust that money and i was right yeah. and i was really proud of gage he didn't look away and normally he Does looks he away like when snakes? he's terrified of snakes like terrified mm. and he um he looked right at the screen i was like wow brave and he's like it's because I knew it was coming. <laughs> and I was like, okay, nobody's forcing you to keep looking. Like, it's okay. And he's like, no, it's fine. So she explains the black mamba snake. Basically, it's the deadliest thing to come out of Africa. This movie came out in 2004. Mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant nicknamed himself the black mamba sometime around 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's directly because of this movie, but I am. I think that Kobe Bryant saw Kill Bill and was like, that's my nickname now. I'm the Black Mamba. Did you see um, Vanessa Bryant got a tattoo that says Mamba Sita on it? That's awesome. I think it's cute. I think that's really sweet. Yes. Um, so anyway, we have Quentin Tarantino to thank for Kobe Bryant giving himself a nickname. Thank you, Quentin. And so the Black Mamba snake who originated the name. Yes. So then um, Daryl Hannah calls Bill and says, guess what? The bride killed Bud, but I killed the bride. Oh, wait, I have and one I more story to say about Black Mamba snakes. I'm sorry for interrupting and being manic as always. It's what I expect. Thank you, Dan. Um, When I was in high school, I took AP literature against my will and uh -huh. we had to read a book. I can't remember what it's called, but it's about this family. They're like missionaries, I think, and they live in Africa one summer. And the youngest child in their family is killed by a black mamba snake. Okay, thank you. Oh, Continue. No. It's very graphic. Do you not remember what the book is? Um, I think it's called The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Oh, Kingsolver. it is. It's The Poisonwood Bible. I never read it, but my brother was supposed to read it, and he didn't read it, and that's oh. why he was failing English. Well, I read it. my mom found out the same day that he got a 36 <laughs> on his ACT. <laughs> wow, he really said two different juxtaposition right there. Let's cover the whole spectrum of mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. Well, I read it and somebody dies. There's also another little kid in that book who has like, um, she's special needs and she mm -hmm. only, what is it? She speaks in rhymes or she speaks in poems. Each chapter she's is a, like spoken. She's the Riddler. I wish. God, I wish. No, my favorite part, though, was, like, the main girl at the end. She stops being a missionary. She marries this hot man that she meets in Africa, and they, like, <laughs> crusade to help all the villagers near their town. And I'm like, <gasps> I just imagine, like, 
she was just beautiful and strong and he was also beautiful and strong and they're beautiful and strong together. Okay. Thank you. Anyway. I I understand your meaning behind it, but I don't think describing a white woman traveling across Africa as crusading conjures quite the image that you want it to. You know what, Dan? You know what I mean? She was trying to help people. This is an actual helping people. No, I get it. Not it's like also the actual a fiction book. Yes, not the actual crusades. Like they're yeah. they're trying to actually help people for once. Uh, we also then learn the bride's real name, Beatrix Kiddo. Which, like, thank God, because I hated that Bill always called her Kiddo. It made me want to vomit. Uh huh. And since now I know he's just calling her by her last name, I like that better. It made yeah. me feel a little better. So then. As Daryl Hannah goes to leave the trailer. By the way, Daryl Hannah's character's name is L. Yeah, I like. She's always I don't Darryl think Hannah. it really fits. Was her, what's her snake name? Sidewinder? No, California Mountain Snake. California Mountain Snake. Yeah. Michael Madsen is Sidewinder. Yes, that's what it was. Because I remember Vivica Fox is mm-hmm. Cottonmouth. Yep. I don't remember what Lucy Lou is. Lucy Lou was Cottonmouth. Vivica Fox was Copperhead. Oh dang it! Okay, well. You know, not that it super matters, but I was trying to remember. So as Daryl Hannah leaves, guess who's there? Beatrix Kiddo, baby. They have what I can only describe as a fantastic, awesome fight. It was really really good. Mm -hmm. And it ends the best way ever. (laughs) Because (laughs) Thurman fucks her eye out. I screamed. I genuinely (laughs) screamed. Because Daryl Hannah's one eye was plucked out first by Pai Mei when Bill dropped her off to go get trained there. He used his beard to pluck it out. He did. And his eyebrows. Eyebrows to hold the eyelids open, beard Ew. to pluck it out. Ew. Um, so then Uma Thurman, I guess, returns the favor isn't the right word, but returns the favor, plucks out the other eye, um, kills her. We assume. We, actually, she could still be alive because she leaves and she's screaming in the trailer around the Black Mamba. I'm going to assume that uh, while she's thrashing about after her eye gets ripped out, the Black Mamba comes and bites her. Like, he finds her. Now, mm-hmm. I know no animal is inherently evil, but I think that he slithers over and he's like, and this is for putting me in a suitcase and ah, bites her. Are mosquitoes animals? No, they're bugs. Okay. Bugs, different story. Animals, <laughs> not inherently evil. Um, I'm just hoping if there's a Kill Bill Volume 3, Daryl Hannah comes back and she has two of the eye patches. I love that. Love that. Um, also, I absolutely wanted to jump out of my skin when, mm-hmm. uh, when Uma steps on the eyeball. Oh, so did Anna. I, we were watching. She's like, I looked away. I couldn't watch that. I know it's a prop, but I had to look away. It was too gross. It, was too it much actually wasn't me. a prop. It was Daryl Hannah's real eye. Daryl Hannah really went blind for this movie. Wow. Good job, Daryl. She's a method actress. I have another science question. Hi, scientists, okay. if you're listening. If you were to pluck out somebody's eyeball, would you still be able to see their pupil? Because it's just a hole. Let me put on my science hat and answer the question. Oh, boy. You you sure will. It's a hole, but you've also got the little connecting tissue at the back. So that would still block it up so you wouldn't see the light shining through. Anyway, it's me, Science Dan. Bye-bye. Thank you, Science Dan. I don't know who that guy was. I loved him. He was really helpful. Oh, I'm good. Good, I'm glad. I, I love that he had a stupid voice, but he still gave hopefully correct info no i loved him i think that was correct science science listeners please get back to me yes hank green answer us please (laughs) tiktok star hank green oh lord all all my culture is tiktok i have nothing else to talk about oh god dan no i know well, we talked about... No, I guess that's still kind of TikTok. I still say we TikTok. talked about Lil Nas X. Like, does that count? <laughs> that's TikTok. Okay, well... Anyway, to Mexico. Beatrix Kiddo. 
She meets with a retired pimp who is surrounded by real prostitutes. What's his name? Esteban? Esteban Viejo. Yes. Which means young. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. That means old. Oh, my God. I'm stupid. Hoven means young. Viejo means old. His name is Esteban Old. Stephen Old. Is that why... Is that why... Jay-Z calls himself Hove. I didn't know he did that, but that would mean young. Hova. Hoven, J-O-V-E-N. No, H-O-V-A. Then I have no idea what that means, because Hoven is spelled with a J. Yeah, you learn something new every day. Anyway. Well, you know, like in Spanish, ha-ha-ha is spelled J-A-J-A-J-A. Ja-ja-ja. Ja-ja-ja. Because Jay's are... Okay, sorry. Anyway, yes. welcome back. It's me, the duolingual owl. <laughs> you haven't studied today. <laughs> I know where you sleep. Literally. Uh, so Esteban helps her find Bill, and Bill is staying at a hotel that is just my dream. It has what looks like a conversation pit. <laughs> Not the 1960s conversation pit. Are you, what's not to love about a conversation pit? You're below, you're in a pit, it's, you could fill it with balls, you're talking, it's Why would you fill it with balls if it's in your house, Dan? You'd have a ball pit. Why would you want, okay, okay, you and I are different. Okay, I could fill it with, I could fill it with the stringy stuff in orange juice and, and just make fun and mock and degrade people in there. And do you know what I would have? I'd have the bully pulpit. Goodbye. I'm ending this. Boop, boop. <laughs> that sounds like a load of pulp fiction to me. Ho-ho! It's more like pulp fact, baby. Oh, gross. Goodbye. I tried to make a Quentin joke. That's my one I joke. I got it. <laughs> uh, so, she discovers that her daughter is still alive. I screamed. I mean, I knew the daughter was alive, but I still mm-hmm. screamed. Four years old. Her name is BB. Um, she, uh, after getting over her initial shock, she plays dead for her after she gets shot. I was shocked. I, I don't think I would have reacted the same. I was just too shook. Uh, and then the rest of the movie turns into a dramatic, aggressive retelling of if Kramer versus Kramer happened differently. Am I wrong? I've never seen that movie, but I know Meryl Streep and Billy Crystal are in it. Yes, and D- Dustin Hoffman. Oh, it's Dustin Hoffman, not Billy Crystal. My bad. Yeah. Uh, so she spends the evening. She just is going to spend the evening at the house. Uh, and after BB gets put to bed, guess what? Because Bill's terrible, he shoots her with a truth serum. <laughs> I already said that he was manipulative and rude. Let's just carry mm-hmm. on. I don't need to re rehash. So she tells the story of how she found out she was pregnant. She was on a mission. Uh, she took a pregnancy test and she found out that she was. Oh no. Pregnant. Dan. Oh no. What? Sorry. Some music started playing accidentally. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And it was 3435 by Ariana Grande. How embarrassing. Can we um, rewind a little bit for a second? No. Oh, no. So. Truth serum. She starts retelling the story of when she found out she was pregnant. She's at a hotel uh, where someone is sent to kill her. But she talks her way out of being assassinated. Mood. By saying, I'm pregnant. I just care for my daughter now. Mm-hmm. I would annoy uh, my way out of being assassinated, to be honest. Come on. Come on. You want to hear about my podcast? I'd be come like, on. please, please, let me tell you a joke. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of Pulp Fiction. Ah, and they'd just be like, absolutely not. And <laughs> <laughs> You deserve to live with yourself. That's enough torture. Literally. That's a fate worse than death. So um, she survives that assassination attempt. uh, And then she explains that she left the Deadly Vipers to give her daughter a better life. 
Um, and Bill ordered the assassination when he found out that she was alive and married to what he thought was a jerk who he thought was the father of the child. Obviously not. He is the father of the child. Um, and then the two start fighting. As, as they're wont to do, as is the title of the film. And Uma Thurman, she does the five-finger death punch. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's not what it's called. Oh, oh my it's God. Five... I was just really confused for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's the five-point palm exploding heart Damn. section. But the five finger death punch is a, band. Is a lot more fun. I know it's a band. You had me fooled. I was out here <laughs> thinking they were named after this movie, and then I was so confused. I was like, when did the band form? And I was just really stressed for a second. Yeah. Could you tell? Yeah, they were definitely formed before 2000. No, That's... they formed in 2005. The band's name comes from Kung Fu Cinema. Oh my lord! We've discovered new things on the podcast. You are in a stunned silence right now. <laughs> I'm just like out of breath. <laughs> I'm like so surprised. Wow, somebody already knew this. But um, this is really exciting for me. Uh, would you like to know another fun fact about where a band got its name? I would. Uh, wait, Fall- sorry. Is it about Fall Out Boy? Yes. Okay, I know the story, but tell it for those who don't. Fall Out Boy is named after The Simpsons. But do you know the story of how they got the name? Somebody in the crowd suggested it, and they didn't know where it was from, but they liked it. And then the people, the writers of The Simpsons were worried that they would get sued because they thought that Fall Out Boy had gotten it first. And Fall Out Boy was worried that they would get sued because it was from The Simpsons. So nothing happened. And then we all hugged and just carried on with our <laughs> lives. Uh, almost all of us carried on with our lives. Bill's dead. Yeah, well, he got that, like you said, that good five-finger death punch. So That's true. <laughs> I still am shook. I genuinely, wow, what an arc. We really, wow, I'm tired. We that did. was exhausting. <laughs> so Bill, surprised that she learned the attack, uh, he makes peace with her. And then as he takes the five steps to walk away, he dies. Beatrix goes, hangs out with her daughter, and drives away into a new life. Now, Dan, Dan. Anna. Anna. I watched the whole movie watching for that scene you were talking about where Uma Thurman, and then it wasn't even an actual scene in the movie. Yeah, I realized that too. I was searching. I was like, where is it? So basically, Quentin Tarantino begged Uma Thurman to drive the car during a scene Mm -hmm. that it it was a stunt drive. she had to drive like super fast on a desert highway. Yes. So there wasn't a lot of traction. It wasn't really safe. She wasn't um, driving her Jeep, so she was not. She was driving the sports car. Um and eventually she agreed after being pressured into doing it. And as she did it, she after it she drove into a tree because she didn't have control of the car. She had wanted a stunt driver to do it the whole time because they would have been able to figure out how to do it mm-hmm. uh and she got injured i don't know specifically what the injuries were um, i think gage said she broke her hands and had a concussion i know she had a concussion the, yeah she had a concussion i don't know the thing that i had said it just says that she got into a bad accident hmm well, that could be anything. I mean, I was in a bad accident once, and I just got a bunch of cuts. My mom lost her glasses. Oh, I thought the bad accident would have been like you dropped a ream of paper, and it sliced your arm up. 
And that's Ow. Where a bunch of cuts. That sounds really painful. I don't like that really at painful. all. That wow. sounds like a crime scene. Like, <laughs> can you imagine how bad that would hurt? Yeah. God, I'd have to. Oh, I did accidentally get ranch dressing in my eye today. That per- that was painful. So some trivia about Kill Bill. <laughs> so we don't have to think about ranch dressing. It hurt. Um, Gordon Liu played Johnny Moe, who's the head of the Crazy Eights. Crazy 88s in volume one and Pi May in this movie. I thought I recognized that name. I was like, wait, didn't they just show him? But yes, you're right. He it was mm-hmm. throwing that beard around and wa- throwing that beard in a circle in one half of the movie this is a, and had little to no beard in the other half. So mm-hmm. um, Quentin Tarantino now considers the car stunt crash gone wrong. Uh, as the biggest mistake of his life. Thank you, Quentin. Stay humble. Mm-hmm. Uh, and following the two of them talking in, I think was 2018, uh, when Uma Thurman had an op-ed in the New York Times about Harvey Weinstein and the accident in general, uh, the two have rekindled their friendship. That makes me so happy. I love mm-hmm. friends. Like That just warms the cockles of my heart. Um, Esteban Viejo is played by a man named Michael Parks. Hated that. I saw it and went, <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, maybe he's like half or something, but that hit me wrong. Okay. Uh, Uma Thurman and Daryl Hannah did not get along on set. Really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Two powerful blondes on set, not agreeing. I guess it makes sense. At the screening uh, at Cannes of Kill Bill Volume 2, um, Uma Thurman attempted to take Tarantino away from Hannah as the pair posed for pictures, uh, and then sources revealed that they had ordered separate areas to be, to be created at the after-show party so they would not clash. God, I... I just don't have the energy to have that kind of beef. I would be so fake. I'd just pretend I like them. But, -hmm. you know, like, secretly, this sounds like I'm a terrible person. But you know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah. Just lie. Just lie. You're only working with them for a while. You're an actor. Just just pretend. You'll be fine. It won't kill you. Being kind is free. Like, Mm -hmm. Maybe they annoy you, but just go home and complain about it to your boyfriend later. You know, that's what I do. <laughs> um, Mythbusters tested that it is not possible to punch your way out of the coffin. Well, no, there's all that dirt on top of her. Yeah. Um, the world's most skilled boxer wouldn't be able to punch a hole. Uh, and if they even did... They would have suffocated and been buried by the dirt. Yeah. I was thinking about that, too. I was like, unless he did a really poopy job burying her, it didn't look mm-hmm. like he did. But if he had, that's the only reason why this could have happened. But otherwise, she would have drowned in the soil. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as I said, the movie was originally meant to be one long movie with an intermission. Like The Sound uh, of Music. The original climax of the movie was going to be a sword fight on the beach. <gasps> How romantic. Between Beatrix in her wedding dress and Bill. Again, uh, I say, how romantic. And then production ran long. So that's when they they had the ending that they did. I liked uh, it, though. I think it was good. Tarantino envisioned Warren Beatty for the role of Bill. As I mentioned, uh, Ricardo Montalban was cast to play Esteban. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't able to make an early read through of the script. So he then gave it to Michael Parks instead of Ricardo Montalban, star of Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. He plays Khan. Ford. Okay. He also advertised for, I think it was Ford and their rich Corinthian leather. Not the rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> um, and then 
in the Kill Bill Diary, which was written by David Carradine, uh, the movie that the bride and the daughter were going to watch was going to be The Aristocats. Oh, I love The Aristocats. When I was little, then, I used to watch that movie all the time. When Disney didn't allow it, Quentin Tarantino decided to have them watch an episode of Samurai Jack. Uh, but in the final film, we overhear them watching Shogun Assassin. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't <laughs> have anything to add. to add to that, except I and also then, watched Samurai Jack when I was little. The last thing is that he would have Tarantino would have loved to write a scene with L Driver, who was Daryl Hannah, and Beatrix growing fifty feet tall and fighting. That feels weirdly sexual. Right? A, little, like, a little bit. I don't know. That just rubs me wrong i was gonna say rubs me sexually but that's not what i wanted to say that's not what you wanted to say at all um so so thoughts i had them um good good no i i liked it just fine i told you Uh like i think as a movie this is good i think it covered a lot of like it's funny, it's action, it's got a little bit of romance. Yeah, the romance is very messed up, but, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's a movie. It doesn't have to be realistic. I liked it. I think it was good. Am I going to be reaching for it again anytime soon? Probably not, just because I don't love action movies, but I'd watch it again if somebody asked. I yeah. think it's a well to. I understand why we reference Quinn Tarantino in film classes. Yes. Um, Yeah, I I enjoyed this too. I think that I personally was... It was detrimental that I watched the two movies a week apart as opposed to Mm. a day apart. Mm -hmm. I think that if you're watching them, you should just watch one and then watch two. If you have the time, just watch them both together because it works better as one movie than it does as two. Um and you can do that. There's a, a cut of it called The Whole Bloody Affair mm. that it's unrated, so it doesn't have the black and white scenes that mm. they, they colored like that for blood. They just have it in color. Uh, and it combines them both into one movie, which is probably the best way to watch the movie. I was also underserved by the fact that I was tired yesterday when I watched it. Fair. So like a good film critic, I wasn't totally paying attention the whole time to it. Um, but it's enjoyable. I like the explanations that we get in this. Uh, everyone, I mean, it's a Tarantino movie. Everybody is playing a wholly unrealistic character, but Mm -hmm. because of the world that they're in, it feels real and everything fits. Um, I think that Michael Madsen's character is really interesting and. I liked Bud a lot. I'm not going to lie. But like the sane man of the crazy assassins, I think mm-hmm. that's a really interesting character that I wish there was more about him. Um, Michael Madsen, who, according to his Wikipedia page, is a poet. Oh, good for him. Interesting. For him. And his son is in Divergent. Oh. I don't know who his son is, but that was on the quick skim of his Wikipedia page. Yeah. Um, but overall, yeah, it's an enjoyable movie. It's a fun time. I don't really have much more to say about it. Mm-mm. It was good. Good time all around. Yeah. Would it be better, worse, or the same with Jonathan Taylor Thomas as, I guess, Bill? There's no role for him. Like, I'm not even <laughs> going to try it, Dan. There's nowhere for him to go. Like, it would be not as good. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere for him to go. Um, I can say with all my heart, it would be better with Jimmy Stewart as Esteban Viejo. Not Esteban. Not <laughs> Esteban. Not not Stephen Old. Oh, oh, you're looking for Bill, see? You're looking oh, for Steve thing, Old. Good thing you came to Mexico, where I, a Mexican, am. Steve Old. <laughs> uh, and on a scale of one to five feet... What do you give the movie? I hate that. I hated that. Um, as a whole, for both parts, I think I'd give it three and a half. Uh-huh. Just because for me, it's just, 
it was good, but it was just kind of not something I'm drawn to. Middle of the road average. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. How about um, you? I think I give this this one movie a three and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, I was more interested in the action because I thought the action was really cool than the dialogue but the dialogue is still very good and you should watch the movie obviously Mm -hmm. now that we've told you the entire plot yeah um as a whole i give it four stars okay combining the two of them together i think they work very well together fair so that's kill bill killiam billiam (laughs) killiam billiam killiam billiam (laughs) We will be back next week. Hopefully, I will be back recording on my computer. I'm really scared about editing this. Send not up on your, my computer. Send up your T's and P's for Dan that his computer will be better next week. Yeah, please. That's thoughts and prayers for anyone who the, doesn't know. The computer doctor fixes it, Mr. Apple. Please, um, Mr. Apple. Mr. Apple. But Give next week, we will back. be back with a returning guest, Alex Langosh. Woo! Uh, he was previously our guest for, what was he our guest for? I don't remember. Blues Brothers, wasn't he? Blues Brothers, yeah, of course. That's <laughs> it's his been a long movie. time, I feel like, since we talked to him. It has. It was warm outside the last time we talked to him. It's warm outside again. Not tomorrow. Is it going to be cold tomorrow? Gross. The high on Thursday, when this episode comes out, is 39. Ew, absolutely not. I, my body rejects that. So, good for sleeping, though. We're going to do Joe versus the Volcano next week. Another Tom Cruise, Meg Ryan flick. You mean Tom Hanks? Yep. <laughs> I do mean Tom Hanks. That's why I good said one. Tom Cruise. Um, so tune in for that. If you like the show and you want to follow us on the internet, you can on Facebook and Twitter at In Conclusion, on Instagram at In Conclusion Podcast. Um, we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash in conclusion, where we have perks that we won't give you, but we will thank you when you sign up to be a patron. So mm-hmm. thanks to those of you who have. <laughs> um, if you want to see me tweet once in a while, I have a Twitter at Dan O'Keefe 86 and I have a website that I have a blog that I haven't updated in a while, dan O'Keefe.com. Love that. I know. Uh, but... The best way that you can spread the word, support the show, tell your friends. Best way that you can help us. Yes, please do tell your friends. And then this is where I have the ding sound effect, like I'm doing a cheesy smile. Ding! I did one too. Did you see it? I did. It was wonderful. Anna, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Autobus Prime 818, or you can find me on Twitter at Autobots Roll Out, capital O for auto, capital B for bots, capital R for roll, and the O and roll, and the O and out are zeros. Woo, that was the fastest I've ever done that, I feel like. Congrats. Thank you. Record time. So, tune in next week for Joe vs. the Volcano. In the meantime, everybody stay safe, have fun, wear a mask, and get vaccinated. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Andy Hurley went to Menominee Falls High School, which I used to eat at the Cousins across the street from there constantly. I was willing him to come to the radio station all the time. We were the alt-rock station in Menominee Falls. Andy, Andy, if you're listening, first of all, your girlfriend is gorgeous, and I wish I was her. Like, her style, impeccable. Second of all, why didn't you ever come visit me? <laughs>